Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Welcome to St. Isidore's. As we celebrate the Feast of All Saints, let's begin our celebration by singing together number 39 in today's Missal, God We Praise You, number 3-9. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist tonight, we pause and we ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors and abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked for every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne Worship God and exclaim, Amen. Blessing the Lord, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. And he said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of the great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. And blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. And blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Way back when, 1969 to 1974, I was stationed at St. James Parish in Omaha. At that time, it was the largest parish in the Archdiocese. We had 10,000 parishioners, three priests, no extraordinary ministers, no Eucharistic ministers or, or deacons. So every, ma every Sunday, we had nine masses. We each had to say three, and then we had to help at the other six. One year we had Christmas, on Monday we had 18 Masses in about 36 hours. I got to thinking even God must get tired sometimes. But anyway, before, for that reason I really didn't like um, Holy Days. In those days we didn't have answering machines on our telephones, and before a Holy Day 
we had three lines, three phone lines in the rectory, and sometimes all three would be ringing at the same time. Day and night before Holy Days, people would be calling to find out what time the masses were, and it just would drive you crazy. Uh, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, and I especially like it when they say, oh, did I wake you, Father? Um, but anyway, the Feast of All Saints was rolling around, and I wasn't too happy because of all the phone calls. And I was thinking to myself, why do we have to have another feast to honor all the saints? The Blessed Virgin Mary has at least four or five feast days a year. St. Joseph has a couple. Uh, the apostles, uh, a number of them have two or three feast days. Uh, why do we have to honor them all again? And as I was thinking about that in sort of a grumbling way and reflecting on the readings, the Holy Spirit touched me, and I suddenly realized what this feast is all about. It's not so much a feast to honor all those uh, top-knot big dog saints, uh, the 12 apostles, Mary and Joseph, but rather, as the first reading points out, we honor those, the number is so great that no one could count. And I got to thinking about that, and I began to start thinking about people that I knew whom I consider to be saints in heaven. Some of them, I'm absolutely sure they're saints in heaven. Others, uh, I believe that by the life they lived, uh, they are saints in heaven, and this weekend is their feast day. I think of little Tracy Smith, for example. I've told you her story before. When she was uh, three years old, she was diagnosed with cancer. The last year of her life were awful for her and her parents. Um, she died at the age of four. But her parents always sat in the first pew in church in front of the altar. And uh, you could tell Tracy was a very, very sick girl. Her parents would always hold her in mass, and she never cried or anything, but you could just tell she was, was very, very sick. The last couple months before she died, when her parents would come up to receive communion, we'd hear Tracy saying, Jesus, Jesus. And so we decided to give her communion. The last couple months of her life would break off a small particle of the host and give her communion. And I think anybody who saw us uh, didn't have a dry in that church. She died at the age of four, and this weekend is her feast day. She's uh, a saint in heaven. And then I think of many other kids like that, uh, or children that I buried. Tyler Michael Wimhoff of her parish a few years ago died shortly after birth. Carlson Schuster, Sienna Spiker, Devin Bird, Daxter, Daxter Thies, little Landon Cole, five years old, um, Trevor Lucky, I like to think that he's a saint in heaven, um, Allison and, Ad and Addison Schrant, who died shortly after birth. Uh, so many infants like that, uh, some of you as parents, maybe some of your children died in infancy or even before they were born. And they're saints in heaven, and this weekend is their feast day. And I encourage you to think of them often and pray to them. And they're not little tiny infant saints in heaven anymore. They have a mind that knows more than we know here on earth. Uh, they're saints with God in heaven. I think two of the many elderly people that I ministered over the years, so many good people. I'd visit people in the nursing home. They were 95 years old, and they'd look at me and say, Father, I can't do anything for anybody else anymore. All I do is pray all day. And I think of those people as being saints in heaven, too. And I would tell them that we're praying all day. They're doing more than maybe they did throughout the rest of their lifetime, and they were so busy about so many things. Um, so it's good for us to think about these people. Many of them are saints from St. Isidore's Parish. Uh, many of them are your relatives, uh, maybe family members. Uh, stop and realize that they are saints of God in heaven and then pray to them, and uh, know that they are concerned about us, and they are praying for us, too. And I like to think that someday uh, this will be your feast day, and this will be my feast day, too. About 30 years ago, when I was just moving across town to come to St. Isidore's as your pastor, well, it's only 24 years, seems like 30 sometimes, and like 10 at other times, uh, but... Um, I remember um, I was visiting with a fellow who moved to Columbus shortly after that, 
And he was having a very hard time adjusting to small town Columbus. He came from St. Louis or Chicago. He had a difficult job. And uh, during the course of our conversation, he looked at me and he said, you priests are so lucky. You work with the best of people. And that became a defining moment in my life. Ever since then, every day, I realized how blessed I am. Truly, every day, I do work with the best of people. And anymore today, I tell people that I am privileged to work with future saints because that's what life is all about. And if we don't become saints someday, we miss the whole purpose of our being. So it's good for us to think about that from time to time and then ask Jesus to help us on our journey and be faithful to the Lord, receive the sacraments often, spend quality time in prayer each day, attend Mass and receive the sacraments faithfully whenever we can. Hopefully once this virus is over, everybody will free, feel free to come back. But we have to realize that we're on our journey through life and our destiny is eternal life to be saints with God in heaven. And that's what it's all about. So we ask the saints who are in heaven, those who know us, to continue to pray for us so that we will be inspired by their example and strengthened by the Lord, following their footsteps. And let's ask the Lord Jesus to help us to live our lives in such a way so that someday when our, com our journey in life is completed and we come to meet the Lord, he'll be there to embrace us and welcome us into the joys of his kingdom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. Sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, as we honor all the saints who are with you in heaven, we realize that we are sinful people on our journey. Continue to pour out your spirit upon us to lead us and guide us so that one day, through your Son's divine mercy, we may well be welcomed into the company of the saints in heaven. Grant us this, Lord, and the favors we now ask in Jesus' name. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop <laughs> Lucas, Bishop Hannafelt, Bishop Conley, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve us in public office, for our president, the House Senate and House of Representatives, our governor, our state and local legislators, that especially in time of crisis, they will strive to work together for what is best for our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents and teachers, that they may always strive to reflect the love of Jesus to their children every day by word and example, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially Dave Bohabi, Dick Godowski, Amelia Eckholt, Mary Gock, Phyllis Hansen, Jim Jacob, Douglas Kilham, Kelly Korth, <clears throat> Mary Lou Kuhneman, Mark Misick, Arlene Miller, Bill Neal, Carrie Ann Pinkerman, and Mark Sullivan, that they may experience God's healing power, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our departed loved ones, especially for Kevin Jureski, James Mayer, Florine Cass, Josephine Plastic, and Linda Spain, that they may know the joys of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for farmers as they complete the harvest, that they may be kept safe from accidents or injury, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the general public, as they prepare to vote, that they will take the effort to become informed and vote for candidates who support life from the moment of conception until death and work for the best interests of all rather than a particular party or personal interest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our nation, that they will accept the results of the election peacefully and that Democrats and Republicans will work together for what is best for all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Let us now pray for all par parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> and for all of our unspoken needs and intentions, let us pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jerome and Peg Sosarski are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary today. We ask God to bless them with good health and many more years of happiness together. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father in heaven, please grant us these and all our needs, for which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Wash me, Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sins. <clears throat> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept <clears throat> the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May these offerings bring, we bring in honor of your, all the saints be pleasing to you, O God, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already give you eternal praise. Toward her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory that you bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty 
both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right it gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, he will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph, St. Isidore, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for in help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people your son has gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to other passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, <clears throat> the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. <clears throat> Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Amen. And with your spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord by your works. Thanks. Let's go forth singing. Number 528 in the music issue, Let There Be Peace on Earth, number 528. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. 